in the course of the next couple of days, there are these, um, what, I guess, unusual uh, bits of the program. Um, the first one will happen in a couple seconds, where um, Marie Myunglak E will be reading from a novel that she's working on at the moment. Um, there's also Rachel Hadas will be reading poems. Um, Jenny Allen will be doing a performance at the end of the day. Uh, and um, Joshua Bennett, who will be here tomorrow, will also be performing um, and reading poetry. But the, the first is um, Marie Myung-Ok Lee, who, in fact, will just sort of self-introduce by a sentence or two, and then we'll do a reading. We're going to go right from that reading to the next panel. Um, but she'll join the panel for Q&A if you've got questions for her then. It's okay, thanks. I'm going to be reading from my forthcoming novel, which is set in the near future, where consumer-driven medicine is king, and how two generations of Korean-American OBGYNs deal with it. Young Min Kwok paused, the nozzle-like applicator of the laser machine in his hand, and appraised what all his years of medical training and experience had added up to, a chorus line of legs in stirrups. Though surrounded by hospital equipment, the examination tables, the wheeled stools, the bright multi-bulbed halogen light, he wasn't in the hospital or even a clinic. He was in the Mall of America, in a storefront sandwiched between the Wild Rumpus, a children's bookstore indoor zoo, and an Orange Julius. Three doors down, another quasi-medical establishment, Lundvik's LASIK Eye Associates, offered the radial keratonomy surgery that young men knew was modeled after the assembly line system they had in Sputnik-era Russia when they needed to standardize the vision of cosmonauts quickly. He wondered what his father would think if he saw the advances communism had wrought would be used to sell unnecessary medical procedures in the American shopping mall. And, young men noted, the white-coated Lundvik representative himself was wearing spectacles. Sanish's depilation nation chain was his new place of work. And so here he was planning to do his first set of laser pubic hair removal. Less painful than waxing. Permanent results. Performed by medical doctor for the highest safety standards. May take multiple sessions. The women, lying on their backs in lithotomy position, their ears plugged with white headphones, were separated from each other by dividers. So while they, while they couldn't see each other, from Youngman's point of view, they were lined up like horses in stalls. The nurse, a young woman in scrubs, but with no kind of medical training whatsoever. She was, she said, most recently a waitress at the Olive Garden. Busied herself with making sure the headphones were plugged in properly. She had them disrobed and then taken before pictures with a digital camera. Youngman thought, how strange and trusting these women were coming into the storefront office and exposing themselves in this way. Hello, I'm Dr. Kwok, he said at a volume he hoped would carry over the competing noise being piped in the headphones. I'll be in charge of your treatment today. The headphone woman nodded or may have been moving her head in time to the music. He turned on the machine, a waist-high beige plastic box that resembled those old exercise devices with the belt that went around the buttocks like a sling and with enough electric vibration and jiggling was supposed to reduce adipose tissue. A number of doctors' wives in horse's breath had owned such machines and he smiled at the memory to think that the finest medical minds at horse's breath Memorial Hospital might actually believe that such a silly contraption could work. The laser flowed through a flexible metal hose, calibrated in such a way that it would be attracted to the pigment in the hair, travel down the shaft, and disable the hair. Disable, he thought, was a better term than removal, or fry, as the other operators in the class had flippantly referred to it. Patients expected that their hair would crinkle and die like trees after nuclear holocaust. <laughs> but while some did, the majority of hairs wouldn't fall out for weeks. It would also depend on what stage of growth the hair was at. Hair in the dormant or antigen phase could escape the laser completely. Not necessarily a bad thing, he was told. Revenue increased geometrically with repeat treatment, and thus he'd been given a whole list of things to say to encourage the maximum number of treatments, 
always suggesting that even more cleanup could be done. He depressed the foot pedal. A beep, a burst of cryogenically cold air numbed the skin, followed by the red pulse of the laser. The sharp smell of vaporized keratin confirmed the laser's strike. When he moved the applicator, it left behind a crop circle of flattened hair. The skin looked slightly rashy. Irritation was a good sign, but it could also make the patients feel uncomfortable. How are you doing, he asked, but the woman didn't reply. Youngman soldiered on, slightly anxious over whether he was doing too little or too much. The fourth woman had a mixed gold red hue to her hair, like the color in autumn leaves. The hair over the mon's pubis was already shaped into a heart. Back in horse's breath, Youngman once recalled seeing in pre-op what looked like a tilted Asian hexagram on a woman's mons. When the surgeon, Stan Mitzner, had seen it, he'd snorted and later made reference to the woman's landing strip. This had puzzled Youngman for hours. When he finally got it, he realized what was even more puzzling was this American idea of turning pubic hair into topiary. <laughs> Youngman felt very sad about ruining the heart. I'm doing this so I can see my tats better, the girl said, raising her head off the table as if she were doing a curl up in gym class. She looked to be about 20. Your tats? My tattoos, she said. See the line in the mushroom? She pointed with a chipped red fingernail at the labia majora. Outside the perimeter of her hair was a bell-shaped mushroom with green dots on the left, a lion roaring out of the vagina onto the inner thigh on the right. You know, this is a little embarrassing for me. You kind of look like my grandfather. Not like he's oriental or anything, but he has those little glasses, and he's bald. Youngman almost reared back. Bald? He wasn't bald. Far from it. His hair wasn't as lush as it was when he was younger, and it had whitened and thinned almost to anacreous translucency. But he certainly had a sufficient amount of ground coverage, as the radio announcers describe a snowfall that leaves no patchy spots. Does your grandfather need a comb? He almost said, but refrained. So anyways, I'm actually doing this for my boyfriend, for Valentine's Day. He's kind of a neat freak. I tried shaving, but it makes you itch like crazy. Those ingrown hairs, don't ask. Youngman noticed that under a patch she just cleared, he could make out a tattooed L. We're just doing this in sections, the girl reminded him, because I'm sensitive. Yes, I'll stop for here for today. Youngman hung up the nozzle while she wiggled into the cheap, net, non-irritant panties that were provided. She slid into her jeans, which themselves barely covered her mons, and Youngman told her the usual, no scrubbing, no sun exposure, no tweezing, and then she was gone. Thank God for the tattoo girl woman, Youngman thought, or else he'd go crazy with boredom. His, her project required multiple visits. She decided she'd even wanted the perineal strip removed. And with the emergence of the secret tattoos, he felt like he was on an archaeological dig. He'd uncovered an I and a C following the L. So now he had L-I-C. License? Hair still covered the anterior portion, so it might spell Alice. That made sense. Because of the sensitive nature of the work they were performing, the operators were not informed of the patient's names. And because most of them stayed stone cold, cold silent, even when he'd done his first nipple hair removal, which necessitated sitting face to face for almost an hour, the procedure seemed more factory-like than ever. So he was grateful when this Alice unhooked herself from the headphones and chatted. He was surprised when she said kimchi was one of her favorite foods. When have you had the opportunity to eat kimchi? Oh, my cousin Kim is adopted from Korea, so we go to these Korean restaurants for her. And she likes kimchi? Oh no, she's never had it. I'm the one who eats it when we go out. Isn't that funny? I love kimchi. Maybe I'm part Korean. <laughs> you know, Youngman said, Kim is a Korean last name, not a first name. If your cousin married a Korean, she could end up with the name Kim Kim. Kimmy Kim, that's kind of catchy. No, I think it's wrong. When Youngman was working as a houseboy for the Americans during the war, when the GIs got Korean women pregnant, sometimes as a joke, they'd get them to name the girl babies Vagina, which to the Korean ear sounded both pretty and appropriately American. And then when the soldiers returned to America to their wives and girlfriends, the Korean women would be proudly introducing their Vagina to the next crop of incomings. He wondered if this Kim girl would one day realize the ignorance of her adoptive parents and if there was a way to fix a lifetime of this damage. No, it's not wrong. It's her name. My parents thought she looked like a Kim, she shrugged. 
Though it was a small motion, it, keep, it created ripples that traveled all the way to where Youngman was. He waited to pulse the laser again. Ouch! That one kind of hurt. Sorry, we'll stop here today. Well, thanks, she said, smiling mischievously. In three seconds flat, she was in some kind of work outfit, safari khakis and a pith helmet. Thanks for making my twat more beautiful. Don't mention it, he said, although he had no idea what a twat was. Alice had to miss her next treatment because young men had repeatedly warned her against sun exposure, and yet she had gone to a tanning salon. She'd come in with a strangely woody hue to her legs. They said it was some kind of other kind of UV rays, different from the sun. It doesn't burn you like the sun's rays can. But it still causes you to tan, he explained patiently. With rapidly dividing melanocytes, the laser will target the pigment as well as the hair, and you could get burned. She pouted. I drove all the way from Wazada for nothing. It's my day off. I wish you would have told me about the tanning booth. Young men want to throw his hands up in the air. How was he supposed to tree out the possibilities of melanocyte stimulation? Should he have to warn her about not taking any trips to outer space for three weeks so as not to be exposed to gamma radiation? And in this too fast world of the Mall of America, why was it even possible to get a tan in the middle of winter? Just don't do anything that makes you tan, he said. That was what his new simplified warning would be, he decided. Wait, what about spray tans? No, definitely not spray tans, he said, even though he had no idea what a spray tan was. The next session, Alice looked suitably pale. Young men could once again see the smudges of blue veins under her skin, and the lion roared in more distinct ochre colors. And today, young men was able to work quickly without causing her much discomfort. They chatted again. She said she was taking on a second job because she had been pleased with the results and might want to do everything, armpits, nipples, perineal, and perirectal area. I want to be smooth as silk, she declared. The hairs fell away like old spider legs when you open a dusty drawer. Blank, L-I-C, blank, E. It was like that word game, hangman, that the surgeon Mitzner used to, used to play on the patient's surgical drapes while waiting for the anesthesia to take effect. Alice Z, he guessed. Thus the tattoo of the fungi with the colorful dots. Doesn't Alice in Wonderland sit on top of a mushroom? She left with her usual wave. Bye, see you next week. Goodbye, Alice Z, Youngman said softly. The next week, Alice Z showed up in the second batch of patients. Today, depilation of the perirectal area. As the laser pulsed, he could hear the counterbalancing whir as the vapor reclamation system kicked in, suctioning up the vaporized keratin and stray epithelial cells. It occurred to him that if he was smelling the smoke, he was literally breathing in some of Alice Z. Fragments of her DNA were entering his bloodstream. He wondered if she was nervous, perhaps a bit squeamish about the area he was working in today. She prattled on about her work at some place called the Rainforest Cafe. That was the one he remembered from his lunchtime walks, where the tape-recorded screams of macaws spilled out into the hall. She was telling him about a little boy whose birthday it was last week. He'd eaten too, many, too much howler monkey burger, cassava fries, and fried chocolate piranhas, cuckoo nut ice cream, and cake, and after a little excitement with the presence to shake and stir his stomach's contents, he began projectile vomiting. Not an uncommon sight in any restaurant, she said. But this kid was spewing in a 10-foot radius, like those rotating head lawn sprinklers like you see on TV. You know, we guarantee 100% saturation. It's the parent's fault if the child overeats, Youngman declared. All children are greedy by nature. They need to be taught about the limitations of the stomach, how the appetite diverges from true physical need. When I was young, I had a very wise person tell me to take only 60% of what I thought I needed. He said, I'd be very surprised on how little I could subsist, and he was right. That's an interesting idea. It's true. Even though today I revise it to say 80%, I still find myself with too much food or drink. You sound pretty wise yourself. Plus, you look pretty good for a guy your age. Thank you, Youngman said, although stung by the, for a guy your age. What does she think he should look like? An ogre? A mummy? When he was 28, he remembered thinking that 28 was the perfect age to be. And in his mind, he still felt that age. Eating right keeps you young, he said. With the next burst, she winced. I'm sorry, does that hurt? There was a bumpiness in the areas he'd just treated, the skin up around the follicles swelling. Irritation and edema were exactly what they were looking for. Um, yeah, a little. It feels like you're snapping a rubber band down there, she giggled a little tensely. 
Youngman tried to gauge just how much it would be hurt to be snapping a rubber band down there. Oh, really, he said, hoping he was conveying the unasked question. Why would anyone want to do this? Once she completed the entire package, including nipples and facial mustache, her total cost would be almost $2,000, not to mention the things she could have been doing during those 10 to 12 hour long sessions, how many books she could have read. I'm not just doing this for my boyfriend, she said. It's shaving leaves bad bumps, and I like to be groomed everywhere. Youngman straightened. His work on the skin ringing around the anus was done. Alice Z was, as she said, a well-groomed person everywhere. How much toilet paper scraps and many more unspeakable things had he encountered throughout his career? But she was just the best case of an intrinsically unpleasant situation. He remembered Stan Mitzner's comment about Dr. Holmberg, the proctologist. What? Does he dream about assholes all day? A typical Mitzner comment, crude, totally out of line, and yet Youngman couldn't help wondering the same thing. The treatment had worked well, the, with the newer, thinner follicles pushing out the wiry ones. A few more passes with the wand in the labial area, and he could finally see the mysterious outlines of the tattoo articulating itself like Istanbul rising in the mist. Lick me. At first he thought it was a name, lick me, in an Indian name. But then he thought it was just poor spacing. Lick me. He shook his head. Something wrong? No, he said. The treatment worked well. Are you pleased with the results? Uh, yeah, except I was like kind of hoping all the hair would be gone. There's still hair. Yes. Again, he explained that hair in the antigen phase might merely grow back again. And then he remembered the last part of his script. The best thing might be to do another treatment. I'll do whatever it takes, Doc. She, she stared up at the ceiling, smiling. When Youngman had worked as an OBGYN, he had pasted a tranquil scene of a beach on the ceiling for his patients to look at. They always laughed and commented on how, on how thoughtful that was. Here, Sanis had some kind of projector that painted red lettering on the ceiling. Add laser leg vein removal to your package for 50% off. <laughs> like, I think of my body as a canvas for my art. The more you clear away, the more canvas, and the more room I have for my expression, you know? Youngman nodded. He understood the urge to want to do, to be different, to express an inner self to a world that's always threatening to overlook you. But if this were his daughter lying on the table in the bowels of the mega mall, talking to some strange man with her mom's pubis exposed, he'd want to weep. She sat up and pulled on her net panties, putting lick me behind a screen. Youngman went into his rote spiel about avoiding sun exposure and keeping the area clean and dry. Yes, yes, not even a spray tan, she laughed, but I look like a dead fish. And as I said, if you have significant regrowth, you can always call for a follow-up. She impulsively gave him a hug. He could sense her fragrance, something surprisingly old-fashioned like honeysuckle. Thank you, she said, for making the time go by faster and for being so respectful. Like I said, you remind me of my grandfather who always told me I could do anything. Youngman nodded. What could he say? Thank you.